Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel, nice to see you again. I made a video yesterday, or recently, depending when this comes out, about all kinds of things, but specifically the discus and how they were growing. And there was a few comments and concerns about the runt of the litter who was doing a massive poo at the time, or I said was doing a massive poo at the time, that clearly got worms, you've got worms in there. Um, and I was like, what? Where? What are they looking at? So I went back and reviewed that footage that I've just stuck in there. Editor me remember to do that. And yeah, it does look a bit like that. But at the time, it did not look like that. And I think if you watch the whole thing, it changes colour uh, depending on where he is in the tank. And to my eyes, it looked like a nice, healthy black poo. <laughs> um, now we're, we're now going to discuss fish poo. Um, poo is a good indicator for a potential sign of something starting to go wrong, already going wrong, problems in your future, that kind of thing. Um, and typically, with discus, but with other fish as well, with discus what you're looking for is clear poos, long stringy poos, uh, segmented poos that are clear often, or white. Um, any of those things are signs that something is not right. You might have internal parasites, you might have worms, same thing, um, or an other number of problems going on. And yeah, I hold my hands up, that did look a bit sus in the video yesterday, but in real life, to my eyes, it did not look a bit sus. So I just thought I'd make a quick follow-up to clarify and check and see what's going out. So I have this morning gone and checked to see if that fish was doing what fish do and had a poo. And yeah, this is happening. I have collected the poo from that fish <laughs> and we're now going to have a look at it under the microscope. Okay, my first microscope was broken, so we're using a second one that I'm not very good at using at. So what you can see on the screen here is the end of a pipette, which is teeny that size. And I've got some of the poop that I've collected in here. We'll see if we can get it on there. Right. Poop applied. And this water drop. Oh, I can't get it in focus now. There we go. So it's hard to see. So I don't know if we'll be able to zoom in any further than that. So that's about as good as we can get it. Now, it does look like it's alive because there's it, that's actually just water movement, I think. Oh. Let's see if I can just move my head out of the way. So I think that's just water movement. But maybe could be something in there. I don't know if that might be something in that middle section. So it's very, every time I just move the table ever so slightly, it moves. But that could be a worm in there. Oh, there's definitely a worm in there. So let me just see if I can move myself out a wee bit. I don't know if you saw that, but something moved. I think you can see just the kind of the bottom left corner where that just moved there. There's a worm going from one bit of the poop to the other bit. So, this is interesting to me because... Oh, God. At first glance, and certainly to the naked eye, this doesn't show any of the signs of worms uh, in that it's, it's white, it's stringy. This is dark, black, good-looking poop there is such a thing as good looking poop. Most of the things you can see there is me moving my head around and it's just altering the way the light's hitting it. That's not actually movement. Um, I think there, if I can get that into the centre of the screen, the bit right in the centre, there's a tiny, tiny transparent bit where the movement is, there's a bit of a, that, that definitely looks like a worm to me. So, like I say, it's not 
the segmented, stringy, white, see-through. It's it's proper dark poo, and to the naked eye, that looked like a good stringy poo. Having reviewed the footage, it did look quite white and stringy and segmented, but that's not what it was doing on the naked eye. So I was about to make a video going, ah, hey, you're all wrong, there's definitely not worms, I don't know what you're on about, but now that I've actually put it under the microscope, there probably is worms. Now you know. So, regardless whether you think that was definitive what we saw under the microscope or not, it has made me think about doing something I was going to do anyway and was probably going to do it about now. I should probably have included it in yesterday's video and that is to worm this tank. Now, that in and of itself might be a bit controversial because there are generally two camps. Number one, you should warm a tank as a preventative measure. Um, I used to be firmly against that and I was in the other camp, which is you should only warm when you see worms or signs of worms. Otherwise, you're potentially putting fish at risk when they don't need to be at risk. Um, as I say, I used to be in that camp. I've now moved over to the preventative warming camp because I have lost too many fish by not catching it quick enough. Um, I mean, this might be a perfect example. I might have misinterpreted something as, no, that's not worms, that's fine. Um, generally, the warming medicine, I don't find too invasive, harmful, too stressful for the fish. It's a quick and easy thing, and why not? Just get it over with and get it done. Especially as I don't know, these haven't come from a reputable breeder as such. These, these are essentially bought from a wholesaler. Um, there could be all kinds of things going on in there, so we just want to get rid of that. So. I'm going to do a worming treatment. I was planning on doing a worming treatment. I probably should have done it a bit earlier. Generally with new fish, I like to monitor them for a month or two uh, before putting them into a display tank or something like that, unless that's unavoidable. Um, I'm happy to worm these. They're, they're all doing fine. They're all eating well. There's no other signs of illness or anything like that. So let's go on with it and do it. As such, um, I have two go-to worming medicines this time. I'm going to be using Cloverleaf Absolute Wormer Plus. I, I have used this regularly with my big discus and, and other fish, as well as Kasuri Wormer. I just don't happen to have the other one, whereas I've got this one. So we're going to use this one. Um, all I'm going to say here is, whatever Wormer you choose, follow the packet and do whatever it says. Basically, just pour it into the tank. Um, there's instructions for this one not to use with UV sterilizers, things like that. Be careful of young fry. These aren't fry, they're young fish, they're not fry. Um, but leave it in and it will do its thing, mix it in with the water and away we go. Easy peasy, it just makes the water go a bit cloudy, you don't really have to do anything after that. Warming treatment done. So I hope that clears up some of the confusion, uh, there were a couple of other mental comments in there as well, so if, you have, if you're the owner of some of them, come and join me on a Friday night, which is tonight actually. Uh, at 9pm UK time and ask me the questions because um, I didn't understand some of the comments. Somebody was upset that we've got Daniels in here unintelligibly. I don't get what that comment means. I, I'm assuming it's negative and they think it's a bad idea. Uh, from what I could tell from the comment, they're unhappy that it's, they will outcompete the discus for food. And I did mention in the video that, yeah, they are a bit annoying like that, but they're well-fed Daniels now, but the discus are getting plenty of food. Um, I don't need the Daniels in here. As I said, they were dither fish at the time. I, they're just not required. Another comment about the temperature for Daniels versus discus. Daniels are very tolerant of lots of temperatures. It's fine. Um, something about, I should be feeding these discus eight times a day at this size. You do you, I'll do me. Um, like I say, come and speak to me on a Friday night, 9 p.m. Come and join the quizzes, fun and games. Uh, we'll see you there. Otherwise, see you in the next one. Bye.